Oh yeah, that's right. I'm doing a review here from Hobby Lobby. The place you least expect it. Stand by. All right, here we are at Hobby Lobby in the model section, and I'm gonna do this quick review. I was here the other day, and uh, I noticed something strange about Hobby Lobby. I know it sounds like a sinful word when we're talking about model uh, building and such, but uh, um, I was a little shocked the other day, so I decided to bring you with me and come down and do this little review. So, here we are at Hobby Lobby. All right, here we go. Here you have your standard board affair that we all are familiar with at Hobby Lobby. Some AMT, Ravel. Okay, nothing to write home about. Okay, I'm sure we're all familiar with this. But come down here and we'll take a look. Huh? Oh my goodness, it's Tamiya. They've got a Tamiya kit here. Holy cow, there's Hobby Boss. More Tamiya. Lindbergh. There's a fun little Meng kit. Cartoon aircraft carrier. An Academy aircraft carrier. The Kitty Hawk. Made by Academy. Who would have thunk it? It looks like they're trying, excuse me, to step up their game in the model world. Okay, here, here we go. Trumpeter. Now this is just a little tiny kit. Nothing to write home about, but who knew? There's Minicraft. There's some of the Ravel space offerings. Bandai. Who knew? If we come over to the tools, look what we got here now. We've got uh, some of the weather masters. Look at that. There's a Vallejo weathering set for green vehicles. I mean, they're really. Look at Here we go. Vallejo rust chipping effects, rust stain and streaking. I'm fairly stunned. You know, look at all those things. We've got uh, a bunch of the different tools. I see Tamiya masking tape, Tamiya uh, cotton swabs, which I use a lot of. Um, of course, we knew they all had the, uh, the Vallejo model colors, okay? But it looks like they're trying to step up their game a little bit. I was pretty impressed, and I just wanted to take you with. Uh, we'll go back to the house, and I'll show you some of the stuff I picked up. All right, that was our field trip to Hobby Lobby today. Home again, home again. I got a little bag of goodies that I picked up uh, there. Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys because, uh, frankly, I was surprised by some of the manufacturing names that I saw on the shelves there. Maybe they always had it and I just never really noticed it. But uh, in a pinch, if I want something to do or something to build, um, I could easily be happy with one of those Tamiya tank kits they had there. So, uh, score. You know, kudos to uh, Hobby Lobby for stepping up their game a little bit. And uh, I hope that they uh, continue to do that and become a, a real resource for the uh, people who have Hobby Lobbies in their communities. But anyhow, so let's take a quick look and see what I got from Hobby Lobby, okay? Starting with uh, my biggest score, um, I picked up this little Meng Sherman tank. And uh, this is from the World War Tunes. And so they've made these little cartoony thingies here. And uh, uh, this is just a really simple, stupid little kit. But I thought it would be fun to do, throw some paint on, uh, you know, put it here in my my room full of stuff, um, but it looked like a fun little kit. We're gonna do an unboxing and a build on this at a later time, but uh, so I picked that up. What else did I get that's in here? Oh yeah, okay. I picked up a couple of these. These are for Posh. 
Um, let, let, here, hold on, let me get this out here. All right, this is my first ever airbrush, okay? This is the first airbrush I ever bought, and uh, it's just a cheapo uh, single stage posh, you know, and uh, I just recently got it back in, in service here because I had somehow lost the, uh, the cup and whatnot. So um, for, for some of the basic painting that, that we have to do, uh, this is way nicer than my dual action, a lot easier to use. So uh, I got her all uh, pieced back together. And while I was there, um, I picked up some pressure valves. And the reason I did that, I've got two of them, one for the Posh and one for my uh, Patriot. And uh, the reason I did this is because uh, I'm hearing a lot about uh, using uh, Future and All Clads versus the paints and having to have some different pressures. And so uh, I wanted to be able to, to make some adjustments to the airflow that I'm getting. So I picked up two of these and got those. And what else did I get here? Oh. Okay, so I picked up some uh, green gray, Vallejo green gray. And uh, according to the Edward instruction sheet for the uh, Spitfire, this is the color that's supposed to be in the uh, cockpit area. But uh, everybody I see building them uses a more uh, kind of a lime green color than this. So I don't think I'm gonna be using this, but I did get it, you know, okay. another Vallejo color on the shelves can never go wrong. Um, this was something I wanted to pick up. Uh, some Tamiya white, uh, somewhere around here I have Tamiya green. I don't know, I don't see it somewhere, but I do have Tamiya green, believe it or not. And uh, I saw somebody building a kit and using white putty and it seemed a lot uh, wetter. The green is really thick and heavy and pasty and, and they were applying this uh, or a, a white putty with a toothpick and it was filling really nicely and doing a good job and uh, I thought that was something I wanted to take a shot at. The other day at my uh, uh, hobby town I got some Mr. White putty um, but I think it's the Tamiya White is more in lines of what I'm looking for but I don't know. I'm going to do a uh, trial with these on my Christie here, and I'm going to see what is all working the best, and maybe I'll do a, a quick review of these putties. And did I get anything else? Uh, just got some junk in here. As you saw, I was making a, uh, these screens for my uh, Christie model, and this is the first one I made, and I didn't like it so much, so I busted out this uh, circle uh, thingy that I have, and I made a a circle on the screen that I was using, and uh, where is that gonna go? It's gonna go here on this. And uh, so I, I made a new one that's a little bit better of a fit, and it's gonna go right in there like so. And I think that's gonna give it a really great look. Um, but uh, so I used the circle cutter and some screen, and then the rest is just junk pencils and a shirt and stuff like that. But then I got it uh, Hobby Lobby. So that was my score today at Hobby Lobby. Not bad, all things considered. It's the closest store to me, and so you know if I need something quick and, and fast and easy, uh, maybe it could become a go-to place for me. So next time you're out and about and you see a Hobby Lobby, stop in. Maybe pick up a kit, uh, some paint, something to let Hobby Lobby know that there's interest in scale modeling and maybe they'll continue to develop that area. All right, this has been Paul for Fat Guy Productions talking to you about Hobby Lobby. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click subscribe. I'm a new YouTuber and I can use all the fans I can get. And uh, if you have anything that you'd like to see me change or do differently or review or whatever, let me know. Uh, if not, uh, just keep watching and uh, thanks for coming by and uh, be good.